Gotta tell you, I love, I love, love, love that Mike Tomlin referred to scouring through players' social media and so forth as reality television. I love the fact that he's going to make everybody at least a little bit uncomfortable in talking about it, reporting on it, or you know, even remotely taking it seriously. But you know what? I'm, I'm going to do it anyway here. Good morning to you. Good Wednesday morning. I'm Dayan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports. This is Daily Shot of Steelers. It comes your way bright and early every weekday. If you're into hockey and or baseball, I also offer Daily Shots of Penguins and Pirates where you found this. Welcome to the all-reality TV episode of Daily Shot. I love the way he handles these situations. Look, I've been, over the course of this weird season, pretty critical of this head coach. There's a lot of things that I haven't liked that I've seen over these few weeks. There's a lot of things and way more of them that I haven't liked that I've seen over the past few years that I feel contributed to some of the more negative things that we've seen this season. It's possible to feel all of that. It's possible to express all of that while also acknowledging that the man's got some strengths. The man's got some things that work for him. Number of head coaches in the National Football League who were able to get Anything at all out of Antonio Brown, one. And there, of course, have been other players along the way, not to any of the extremes that A.B. demonstrated, either from the positive sense on the field or from the disastrous sense off the field. But he's got a history of being able to deal with with players like this, and that's in large part because he handled or handles them the way he's doing it now with George Pickens. He doesn't see Pickens as a problem. He doesn't see Pickens as complaining as a problem, and he doesn't see anything that Pickens or anybody else does on social media as even a thing. Now, maybe that's because he's older. Maybe, you know, there's some stick in the mud component to it. Maybe he's just telling different people what it is that he thinks would best serve the Steelers' interests. Never, never rule that out with him. But listen to this response from his weekly press conference yesterday when he was asked if George has expressed his frustrations to the head coach. Heck yeah, man. He expresses frustration all the time, man. Um, he wants to be significant. Um, he wants to be a reason why we're successful. Um, man, y'all don't begrudge that. Um, I want guys who want the football. I want guys who want to be central reasons why we're successful. And so that's, um, you know, that's a non-issue, to be quite honest with you. He was then asked, in general, how it is that he handles situations where whether it's George or another wide receiver come to him and complain like breathing it's easy I know it's a cute story for you guys but it is it is a pebble in my shoe to be quite honest with you in terms of the things that I have to do in an effort to get this group ready to play this week our focus is on the Green Bay Packers and what we're all going to do um, in this football game uh, and I can't state it any plainer than that It's like reality television, the way you guys follow social media and write stories about it. Now, is he, I'm going to throw this out again, to an extent, you know, keeping things calm in the public view, putting on the happy face and smiling and joking and whatever else so that he can make sure that nothing further comes of it, that he's taking every step that's within his control to make sure it doesn't get out of hand. Yeah, I'm sure. Because otherwise, look, if he would be irritable about it, if he were to say, you know, guys, come on, just ask me a football question, which he's done in the past. And if he were to do that, it would look like, whoa, Tomlin's really troubled by this situation. You see where I'm going here? The only way he can win is the only way a lot of us can win our way out of 
a challenge, and that's to do so with a sense of humor. Oh, laugh a little bit. Uh, make somebody else laugh a little bit. It usually works. And you know what? It will this time, too, because if there's one thing that leaps out about situations like these, it's that they're so quickly and so easily remedied. Because you have another game Sunday. And if you get George the ball a couple of times, whether you would consider that to be a reward for his behavior or what I've been suggesting for a while, which is to just wag a finger in his face and tell him to grow up, I'm not the head coach. You're not the head coach. There's only one of those. And all he cares about, man, you hear me say this all the time here, is the outcome Sunday. That's it. That's it. Now, I haven't always admired that about him. I think it can be effective in the moment, but I also think it can bury a very reasonable study of trends and other things that go wrong on a consistent basis if you're just burying your head in the last result and the next result. But for this, it's gold. It's gold. He doesn't care if he's giving in to Pickens. He doesn't care if he's enabling him. All he cares about is how many catches Pickens is going to have and what kind of damage he does against the Packers. And he doesn't even really care all that much about that. All he cares about is that the Steelers end up with one more point. And that sounds kind of cliche-ish, but he lives it. And he lives it to the extreme. And there comes a point where his own players have been around him long enough to grasp that there's really no point in trying to egg this guy on or push his buttons or whatever else here because all he's going to tell you at the end of the day is what it is that he's expecting you to do in the next game. And if that's some sort of mastermind approach on his end, I, and I don't know, maybe it is. He certainly does seem cerebral about this sort of stuff. Then wow, right? That's a gift. When we come back, J1Q. This segment of Daily Shot is brought to you by our good friends at Mike's Beer Bar. They're located on Federal Street, directly across from PNC Park. Mike has more than 500 beers on tap, including from more than 50 local breweries. Stop in and say hello. Tell Mike we sent you. Mike's Beer Bar. Today's J1Q comes on a very related subject from Keith, who asks, DK, people who hate Mike Tomlin are still just going to hate him no matter what, right? I mean, at this point, it has to be pathological. I personally hope that the Steelers win out, if for no other reason than to see some people's heads explode. Oh, that, that's not any kind of motivation for me, Keith. I would imagine it's not a motivation for many. The head coach, by and large, isn't popular. And that's mostly because his various shortcomings, and they are real, have been exposed so many times so often and on so many of the same situations or the same settings that every time any of us sees it once now, you know, our memories are triggered to remember the hundred or so other times we saw that exact same thing and had the exact same type of reaction. And that does not go well for someone who's been in the same place for such a long time. That's why people will say so-and-so is just worn out their welcome or the message is getting stale or whatever. That's why. If Mike Tomlin had uh, some clock management issue out of nowhere that he'd never had before, we weren't going to have that same kind of reaction. But we do with these things, these things that bug us. And, you know, my man, I, I'm really not any different in this regard. When I asked those three questions in a row 
in Las Vegas earlier this season only to get the same non-answer three times, I had to remind myself that, you know, it's legitimately his prerogative to not answer the bleeping question. And that the reason that I was getting annoyed by it was that he does that all the time. And in the moment, I probably allowed some part of my personal whatever, you know, to have some kind of feeling when that's not at all what press conferences are supposed to be about. Not that I regret for a split second asking all three of those questions. I mean, it's just, it's nuts that the head coach doesn't want to talk about his offense after a game. Just nuts. But to your point, Keith, look, uh, while stressing again here that everyone's got a right to criticize the head coach, I criticize the head coach. I'm sure you criticize the head coach. There are, in fact, people who just can't stand him, who just want nothing more than for him to be gone. And they'll take it so far. Man, do I hear from a lot of these people as to get really excited, like like palpably excited when the Steelers lose. And that, to me, is taking it so far that oh, you just find another team. If this one causes you this much, you know, uh, unease, I mean, there are things you can do with your life. I, I went with my wife on uh, Monday out to Falling Water. Never been there before. You been there? The Frank Lloyd Wright house that was built in the 1930s. It's now a UNESCO heritage site. People come from around the world to see it. Set in the literal middle of nowhere, like 15 minutes outside of Connellsville, but like out in the woods with a stream. And as soon as you start walking near the house, you don't even have it in view yet. You hear the sound of the creek as it's headed toward the house that it eventually goes under. And you get there and you just see these were filthy rich people, these Kaufmans from back then. And yes, the same Kaufmans from downtown Pittsburgh. And you could just picture them just having the most relaxed, uh, non-internet, non-highway honking television. Any, I mean, radio did exist. I don't know if they had radio there or not, but... It was, it was an amazing experience. And I guarantee you, I had more enjoyment in the hour and a half that I was there than these people who just seethe at any mention of anything remotely upbeat about the Steelers have had in the past, I don't know, 10 years. Well, you don't understand, DK. It's not like that. It's, it's because da 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 da. Okay. But it's it's making you something that you probably don't want to be. Go to Falling Water. You have to call in advance, by the way, to do that. You can't just show up at Falling Water and say, hey, I'm here to see the house. They do these walking tours. Um, you'll really, really, really enjoy it. They are not a sponsor. They're not an advertiser or anything. I went first time in my life. Uh, I had that on my list forever and ever and ever. Kind of embarrassed that it took me as long as it did to get there, but I'm really, really glad I went and I would recommend it to a healthy percentage of those listening to today's episode. I appreciate the question. I appreciate everybody who listens, even you people in need of falling water. And we're going to do this again tomorrow. 